Hello, everyone. I guess Falche Rolf, Huig Kuene Nehi Nacht. And welcome, everyone, to tonight's Kuene. It's Mish Duan, I guess Shop Neil. Neil. A Tamika Bragas Tossa. Gahanwa, Kurmagat, Gahanwa. Uh, for our new feature, Lema Vehlin Enocht, unfortunately, Emma couldn't make it tonight. Um, uh, by the lower canal generators, but we've loads of questions anyway, so we'll get stuck into it. But just before we do that, I've a little announcement to make. This is going to be my last live stream here on Bite Size Irish, um, my last YouTube video for Bite Size Irish. Uh, so it's the end of an era and um, so it was great uh, working here for so long and um, it'll be great to see Bite Size Irish grow in the future. And we're really going to miss um, you, of course, you've done so much over the last few years with Bite Size. Fantastic contributions. So, Mahoy Mudge Uwin Gamorhu, August 2, Emma Hath. Good evening, Emma. Thank you so much for everything. You're a Rashin, could have two slash. So let's start it. Um so, uh, so do we have um, a first question there? So, so let's uh, we have here a question. So I imagine there are some very poetic names for flowers and plants in Irish. Yeah. Could you give some examples? Yeah, so that, that question comes from Heather in uh, the USA, um, Hal America. Um, we found we did find some some lovely names um, based on one simple little word. Um, so one word, a very basic word, is lus, meaning plant or herb, as you can see there. But there's a lot of other words which are based on that, and they're quite colourful. I think. I wonder if you'd agree with me, um, Shuan. So the first one, we've got a, a few of these now. The first one is Lusnamo. Lusnamo. This is cucumber. So the plant of the, what's that about? Yeah, the plant of the cows. So I've never seen, personally, I've never seen a cow with a mouthful of cucumber, but they must like cucumbers. So um, <laughs> cucumber sandwiches, I suppose. Lusnamo means the plant of the cows. So that's a, a nice image, I suppose. Uh, the next lus we have is Lus Lia. Lus Lia for lavender. And if you know your colours, Askailige, you should know that Lia is grey. So the, the grey plant. And um, I'm not sure. Colours can often have other slightly different tinges too. I don't know, Shuan. Does, does the word Leah, does it sometimes have a little purple hinge to tinge to it? Or is it grey, do you think? I haven't come across it myself um, before Leah referring to a purple. But mm. I can see how when you think of it, especially lavender, that colour lavender, it is a greyish purple Yeah, uh, quite yeah. often. So it does make sense. Just the colours can be a, not 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 always a one to one match, you know. Sometimes when we talk about uh, green or blue or something, it's or, or red, of course, um, it's not a one to one match. But that's not us, Leah. Sounds nice too. Lavender, the grey plant, and here's another one that everybody should be able to guess. Lusacholata, lusacholata, the opium poppy, of course, like your shamrakolata. Um, this is the word kolu in the Tishal Genajach. So the opium poppy is the sleepy plant, I suppose, because it's going to send you to sleep. Um, so that's a very descriptive term and um, pretty easy to remember because we all know Shomra Kalata for the bedroom, I think. Um, we've got a couple more Lus names coming up. The next one, Lus an Oer. Lus an Oer. Hedge mustard. Now, I have to admit, I don't know hedge mustard myself, but I'm assuming it's flowers or golden flowers because lus and or is the golden plant or is gold in Irish. So 
that's a very nice image as well, isn't it? Um, and we've got two more on the lust list uh, before Shuan has a few examples of plants with nice names. Uh, the next one is Lus Anchramchin, Lus Anchramchin, the daffodil. I don't know where the word daffodil comes from, to be honest with you, but Lus Anchramchin is very, very clear. Um, the word Kyan for head is in there at the end. And crumb, C-R-O-M, if you look it up, it means to, to, to bow, to bend, to stoop. So the daffodil with the head hanging down. Lus Anchramchin. Very descriptive name again, I think. And the last one might be my favorite of this list. Lus Nagark. We had Lus Namo for the cow's favorite food, the cucumber. So Lus Nagark is buckwheat, and that is the plant of the chickens, of the hens, kark. So um, it must be very popular food for them. Um, so if you've got some cows or chickens coming around for dinner, you know what to feed them, I think. And um, Sean, you had a few examples as well, didn't you? Can you tell us about these ones? Uh, so here's the first yeah. one. Um, so the first one there is the Irish for snowdrop, which is Plurin Schnachte. And I think it's it sounds lovely, Plurin Schnachte. And it means little snow flower or little flower of snow. And so it's a lovely little word that. Yeah. And we've also got um, the Irish for cowslip. And that is Banya Bo Blachdan. And that is like the the milk of the milch cow. So a cow for milking milch cow. Um, so cow's milk in a sense. So that's the cowslip. Mm -hmm. And this one now is is one of my favourites of the ones I picked here, and it's the Irish for evening primrose, which is cunyl iha, or night candle. And I think that's so lovely that a flower would be taught as, as a candle and in the night. Very romantic, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's another lus one that came to me there. Lus more. It's a simple one. If many will probably think of this, um, recognize this. Uh, Lus mower. I'll just uh, write that up. Um, and that is one of the words for a foxglove, for the foxglove in, in Irish. Oh. Lus mower. Oh, okay. Lus mower, foxglove. So that's just, I guess, the big plant. <laughs> because it is big. So it makes sense. Yeah. Funny, I think for this one, the Eng the English um, word is is more evocative in a way. Fox glove, uh, foxes. It is. It fox. is. It's a bit of an, yeah. It's more is quite simple, but fair enough. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Anwar, Anwar Farad, so Marshin, and So let's get on to our next question. So it's what's your favorite item? words for animals and Brenda that's coming from Brenda what's your favorite Irish words for animals so do you have any favorite Irish words for animals there um Neil yeah I, I have two words which are quite simple in a way but I think again um they, they make me think you know they're kind of evocative so um here are the two that I chose rock for trout and fanyog for swallow. Um, brack for trout, brack and speckled, of course. So that word pops up a lot in Irish. In fact, a lot more commonly than the word speckled in English. It's not a very useful English word, but it's a very useful Irish word. The trout, of course, if you see the fish, it's it's got speckled, it's got dappled with dots or something on the skin. But we also use the word brack for, um, you know, our favorite um fruit bread to have with a cup of tea in the afternoon some barm brack or barring brack um speckled and you know if we talk about if we've done some writing or note taking we can say ta am lahanach brack you know you've you have speckled the page so it's just a beautiful word brack in itself um and it's got a lot of uses on irish so a great little word and fanyog i really is the swallow 
and of course it's got in it it's got the root fan and uh, which means that it, this is a bird which is going it's it's wandering it's roaming isn't it when it's traveling every year so fan is is wandering so this little bird is a wanderer i think that's a great image too and perfect for the swallow of course um in the og there as well um giving you the sense that it's a, a small bird so a little wandering mm. one in a sense <laughs> yeah very cute yeah 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 I've got another old word here, and this is one that um, Emma suggested to us, actually. Um, shame she can't be here tonight, but granyog is a word a lot of people might have heard. It means a hedgehog, um, and og, it's, a, it's another little thing. Um, but a, a term that I didn't know was granyog hra, um, like a beach hedgehog. But this is a sea urchin. And uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a sea urchin, but Shawan, as a Connemara woman, I'm I'm assuming you have because that's where I saw them down in Connemara at my grandparents' house, um, just washed up on on the tide one morning or something. But they are very spiky, like hedgehogs, except on the beach. So Granyogra, the sea urchin. So that's very evocative again. <laughs> And did you have any oh, wow. animal names you like, Huan? Oh, um, uh, yeah, so I had a few. Um, the Irish for otter. And the Irish for otter is Mada Ishke, or Madra Ishke, Madu Ishke. Um, and that's literally water dog. And I think that's nice because when you think of it, an otter that's, that does sort of look like a dog in water. So that's a nice one, I think, mm -hmm. Mada Ishke. And it's also called uh, Daurku. That's another name for it, Daurku. And Daur is an unusual word for water. And Ku is usually known these days to mean hound, but it could just mean dog. Um, but Ku, like Ku Cullen, uh, that's mm -hmm. the same word there. So it's, and there's it's another water, word. It's water hound both ways, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. That's right. That's right. It's just one's a bit more of a, uh, how would you Common say words. it? More yeah. literary way of saying it, maybe, or something. In the sense, yeah. you know, the more uh, sophisticated words or something. I heard the uh, the Welsh word for, I don't speak Welsh, but I, I'd love to learn one day. It's on my list. Um, the word, Welsh word for word is dur, I think, if my pronunciation is okay. D-W-R, dur. So that's clearly that's the similar. same as our word, our or door. That's the same word. So door, it's it's an old old word. We can also hear it in the place named Guidor, up in Donegal, of course. So um, so uh, yeah, uh, a water dog is an otter. Shine, and um, another word that is has. Um, Dawr in it is the Irish for a hippopotamus or a hippo, and that is Dawrach. So Ach is um, the word for a horse. Now, again, it's a bit like Ku and Madra. Uh, Koppel, you'd probably be more familiar with the word Koppel, but Ach is another word. And you've got Achre in um, that's a place um, in in um, more east County Gaul, which would be nearer to where I would be from originally. And um, that is, um, that, uh, to, to my understanding, uh, sometimes it can be a bit difficult to tell what, what place names mean exactly. And with the whole team of nature, um, you can look at just the place names of Ireland and you'll see the, the, the natural features of that area brought into it. But what I believe that one is, um, I've understood that one to believe like the flat ground that has horses on it. And um, so uh, that's that's one, maybe maybe that's just one interpretation. There possibly is another, I'm not sure. Sometimes, you know, there can be different interpretations of, of uh, the place names. Um, but um, that's a so, new one uh, for me. I love to hear that about the word ach for horse because um, 
I actually studied Old Irish a long time ago, and the word for horse in Old Irish was ech, E-C-H. Now, that became ach in modern Irish. But that definitely, I think when we say ach, it usually has the sense of being a, a great big horse for racing or, you know, and maybe the couple was the old workhorse or something. But couple is the word we commonly yes, use today, I, of course. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's a good, that's a good, um, that's a good uh, example there. A uh, good description. I suppose in a way you could think of it as well in English, how you have steed rather than, uh, as well as yeah. the word horse. Different flavour to the um, words then, yeah. Yeah, different flavour. So daurach, it's, um, it's, the hippo is a water horse. <laughs> Doesn't exactly look like a horse, but um, there you go. But I suppose not many wandering about here. Maybe <laughs> that's where the, where the word hippopotamus comes to. I'm not sure about hippo, but I think potamus is about water. Uh, we say if something is drinkable, it's potable. I think it maybe it is. I'm, I could be inventing things off the top of my head here, but it might be a common thing. Uh, but yeah, if you want, are there any other words yeah, for animals? It sounds like Latin, like? doesn't it? Not Latin, but Greek. Yeah, or maybe Latin. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. let's, oh, yes. So um, there's, there's some very interesting things generally about the names of animals in Irish and from some of them and that's the onomatopoeia uh, of them for example bow bow you could think of it as a bit like moo you know bow it kind of reminds you the sounds they make the same and bow is of course cow as we had earlier um with lust no more. and couple as we just mentioned there as well couple clip clop couple 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 well, yes. <laughs> um, again, I think there's some onomatopoeia there. Mm. And uh, even with muck, pig, muck, you know, you could think of it. I think it's closer to the sound they make than oink. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so and of muck, course, they, they like to roll around in the muck too. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So it's a, it's a good one. And so those are the, those are the three. Um, I've, I've heard the same actually said of queera, uh, sheep in Irish. Uh, Coira, when you think of it, uh, like every country, well, many languages have very different ways of interpreting uh, animal sounds. And um, when you think of it, Coira, it could sound quite similar to the, the sound that um, that a sheep makes, Coira, Coira. Um, mm, so there's, yeah, there, there's, yeah it, it depends. Maybe it depends on where the sheep are from. <laughs> if you speak Irish or not. Which blast or which kind of inch they have. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And then the other thing I was thinking of was the Irish for blackbird. And it's not an Irish. Mm -hmm. um, Lundov is the male blackbird. And as far as I know, Lund is just another name for board. Ian would be the normal common word. As far as I know, Lun is just another word, a bit like how we had Ach and Coo and stuff like that. Uh, just there. But and and Lundov or Du Lundu Lundov, but depending on on um Kanunchen dialect, that's black. So again, that's quite literal, but that is the Irish for the male blackbird. Now there's another name for the female blackbird, and that is Kirshach. Kirshach. So now I've heard that it's taught that people taught for time that there were two different breeds of birds because they're familiar with the blackbird. You know that the male and the female blackbirds are quite different looking. The the, the female blackbird isn't even black, it's more brown. So maybe that was the, the, the reasoning, the sense that, well, we're not going to call it a blackbird if it's not black. So maybe yeah. that was the idea. So there's um, so it makes sense that they would have different names given they look quite different. But yeah. So they don't have the same word. So okay. Yeah. So I think um, I, I like that. I think that's something um, unique to Irish. Possibly not. Possibly there's other languages. But I like that feature in Irish. Mm -hmm. 
And interesting that you choose that one because you're living uh, in Melfrischte these days, aren't you, in Belfast? And uh, I remember at university doing, in my old Irish class, uh, studying a poem which was based in Belfast, in Belfast Loch. There wasn't a Belfast at the time, but Belfast Loch, Loch Lee. Um, and it's about um, Antain Bjog, the little bird. And it describes a little black bird with a yellow beak sitting in the branch of Belfast Loch. It's a lovely little short poem in Old Irish. And uh, it's uh, I've seen it in the logo for the Gaeltacht football and hurling club in Belfast, Echra Loch Lee. So um, there's a nice Belfast connection there somehow. And possibly, as I mentioned, the, um, the cafe in the Radio Falce building, um, that's on Lundov, and I would imagine that could possibly be referring to that poem. It must be, uh, I would yeah. wonder. Yeah, it's a beautiful poem. I've, I don't know if you've ever read it, Siobhan, or ever. Everybody else I think I've come it. across it. I think actually it's, yeah. I, I think I have uh, have come across it. Yeah, it's very and short. Just translated so, English yeah. as well, but yeah. Mm. But um, a little yeah. bit of Belfast iconography is still there. Great. <laughs> Great. 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 So we'll have another question. And this here is, do you have any proverbs or saying that are, are sayings that are linked with nature? And that comes from Barry. So, um, have have you any there, um, Neil? Any does any do any come to mind? Any um, proverbs or anything? Yeah, I've got a couple. I love. There's a few that I really love, um, and especially the the first one. Um, being Sulimwer, or you could say being Sulifariga. Again, like we said, a lot of nature words, you could have two or three different words for the same thing because, you know, they could be very, very old words. So, Mwer and Fariga are the same thing. It's the sea. Being Sulimwer, no, being Sulifariga. So, um, there is hope to the sea, or there's hope with the sea. Um, and uh, I think it's used, I guess it's used, you always have to work out what when we'd really use this phrase, but, you know, there's always hope, is the idea. There's always hope. Be in Sulemwer, be in Sulefarag. And uh, there's a slightly dark second line to this, Shanakal too. I don't know if you've heard it before, Ahilan, but um, uh, the second line is, be in Sulemwer, ach, ni vi in Sulehui. But there isn't hope mm. with the grave. So I guess it's quite a dark story behind it. Uh, maybe coastal communities when some of the men haven't come home from the boats. And if they haven't come home, if there's no sign of them, there's still hope. But yeah. if, if they're lost and they're buried, they're, you know, then they're just gone. So quite a dark story behind it. But if we just keep the first part, I think it's nice and positive. The insul and where. Or being Sul the Farriga. Um, there's always hope. Okay, so. Um, and yes. Yeah, nice. a little bit dark. <laughs> um, I've got another one, which is another aspect of Andulra or nature. Um, Marin and Kran, Achni Warren and Lau Achur E. Marin and Kran, Achni Warren and Lau Achur E. So the tree lives on. The tree survives, but not the hand that planted it. So I don't think this is dark either. This is uh, saying that, you know, these, you know, we maybe we're only around for a short time, but our influence lives on, especially nature. Maybe, you know, nature's bigger, more important than us. So um, it's nice to take the long view about nature and plant lots of trees, of course. So um, I think that's nice. Marin and Kran, Achni Warren and Lau Achar E. We could even use that with, with Shuan leaving bite size and say, well, she's leaving, but her influence will be felt for a long time. We had some lovely comments there. Um, um, Christor saying, uh, we learned so much from your videos. 
and J.W. Mulligan saying okay. you were his first Irish teacher. Jackson, you'll be missed. And so I'm sure there's a lot of other people who feel the same way too, just as we do in Bite Size Staff. So Marlon and Cran, Ach Ni Warlan and Lau, Ach Her A. So the tree survives, but not the hand that planted it. Or I hope to live for a bit longer. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, but it, it, again, it lasts. It's, 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 that's the nice thing about yeah. the word mar as well. Um, lasting. Yeah. yeah it's, 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 there's mm -hmm. always that. It's a bit like actually that that proverb being so uh, in a sense, because um, it, with the word mar, it's not that negative. It's, you know, it's. Um, or knee warden rather when you say knee warden it's not it's not even that negative it's it's just didn't last doesn't mean mm. it doesn't or is it it can have different meanings depending on context but yeah uh, so we've, had the, we, we've had the sea and the tree and you had a nice one about the rain um oh yes big, so this one is a... Ireland, isn't it? so uh, what's this tell us about this one of you so this one is Nihe Lawn Abosti Lawn Abosti. So it's a bit of a, a pun, I guess, as well, on top mm. of that. Um, because Boshti, both versions here the, are, are they're different words, but they're pronounced the same. And that's due to Perfect the wonders time. of Irish grammar. <laughs> <laughs> and what it means literally is a rainy day is not a children's day or the day of the children. Um, so it, it makes it makes sense, you know, if it's rainy out, the children aren't going to be happy. They're not going to be able to go out and play. Um, so, you know, things don't, you know, just things that go in your go in their way, really, go in one's way. So I think that's sometimes how that is is used in context. Um, uh, what do you think, Neil, of how it's used in, in, in context? Because it is one that you, it comes up often enough, or at least you see it often enough, maybe. What, what I love about this one, what I love about this one is that it made me remember that feeling of, of being cooped up on rainy days. And I don't have children myself, but all of my friends do. And of course, it, it, it's a tough day when it's a rainy day and the kids can't go outside <laughs> and, you know, um, so I really remember strongly that feeling of, uh, you know, um, the, uh, so yeah, a rainy day is not the kid's day. Um, so I'm not sure about in context, really. I, I, I just like the phrase, you know, I think I would probably use it on a rainy day when we're disappointed. So quite literal. Yeah. But I love the yeah. rhyme as well. La and the Bashti, La and the Bashti. Perfect rhyme. And as you said, the wonders of Irish grammar. It's... Um, <laughs> it's 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 a fun one, um, although maybe the angry kids want to want want to appreciate your punning and jokes when uh, when when it is rainy outside. That's it. That's it. <laughs> um, very we good. We had one more about um, the season, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. This is one mm -hmm. again. We're bringing cows into it. Lay into the boar, Evie. Um, oh yes. Um, oh, yes, I remember that was your favorite. Yeah, go on ahead, but, um, tell us about that one. Yeah. So, Leighton and is literally the days of the bridal cow, and it's also known as the old cow days. And those are the last days of March and the first three days of April, generally. I think the number can change, but I think that's generally what it's thought of as. And it's when the weather can be quite miserable and unpredictable. And of course, the, we, we've just recently had that. <laughs> so um, it, it comes from Shanachas folklore, this thing about, you know, what's the connection between those days and idled cow, boar So there's a little story there in Shanachas, and there's a number of versions of the story, but basically how it goes is that the month of March has been trying to kill a particular boar um, but it has failed, so it needs to get three days on loan from April to finish the job, basically. And that's why the first few days of April can be as bad as March weather can be. That's 
that's the idea now just there's long versions of it with twists and turns and many details but that's basically the uh the, the, the that's 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 the the idea behind all of them basically they would be that that would be the gist of them and boar mm. evoke interestingly enough um our bridled cows as it literally means it's a cow kind of like stripes or lines down it um it's actually its own breed of cow uh particular to ireland and it's classified now as a rare breed and we we've a number of rare breeds of of cows in Ireland that I don't think are found anywhere else except in Ireland, and there are just a few herds, and you could count you know the amount of of them that are there, but great attempts have been made to preserve these these and and grow these um these breeds, but boar is one it. of them. Mm. And um, it's a, a reddish brown color, and it has kind of like vertical, patchy stripes going down it, uh, all over the body. Um, but it's it's quite interesting if anyone has an interest in that, looking up, um, the different breeds, um, of native breeds of Irish cows, and apparently the nearest they could find is, um, in Iceland. And I think that the Vikings might have had something to do with it, uh, with um, with maybe perhaps breeding this particular cow. So it goes back a long, long time, apparently. That's an interesting mm. thing, I think. Well, Iceland seems far away, but people were going on boats between Scandinavia, Iceland, Ireland. So makes sense. Yes, yeah. I think. I, wow. I, um, yeah. I remember seeing a documentary too on TT Cahar about the native Irish species of goat, the old Irish goat, Shanacha in the Heron, and they're beautiful mm. animals, very, you know, beautiful hair and um, horns and all of that. And again, um, uh, the sort of animals, uh, it, it's fantastic to preserve and breed and, and so on. So maybe one day when I have a big farm, I'll have lots of these native breeds, that will be fun. Um, my so we'll catch the L again. Any other questions? Um, so we have another one there, or we had one there from let's see now, it's from Megan, also in the US, and I believe. And um, she says, Our question is, it's a bit of a long one now, but. I woke up this morning, the Saturday before Easter Sunday, with an Irish phrase in my mind. The phrase I heard started with Arnoch or Aroch and had something like Lin at the end, but with another uh, syllable that sounds something like Kuchola uh, between the words. This is how I heard it Arnoch Kuhuli. The first word was spelled Aruch or Arnoch, and um, it, 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 she's comparing it there to um, a recent chart on how to say it's spring, Tan Taruchlin. It's spring. Spring is with us, literally. So she, uh, she's just wondering does this make sense? Uh, where she heard this? Where may she have heard this? Um, so, good morning. Uh, good Megan, thank you for your question. Um, so I'm not sure what that could be. Aruch, Arnoch, Kuhuli, Kuhuli. Does that ring any bells for you there, Neil? Uh, it doesn't, to be honest. And but I think it's very, um, very interesting that this is that uh, Megan. So the video uh, on the phrase ta and tarach lin, um, springtime is here, if you like. Um, so possibly it's just that phrase keeping its way into into her brain and maybe with the dream in the morning, whatever, it's coming out a little funny. But it's great to see that you're unconscious playing around with the language. Um, so, you know, when you're listening frequently, doing a little practice every day, as we always say, 
um, it does get under your skin and it becomes um, it becomes kind of second nature sometimes. But um, I'm not sure about the specific phrase that she remembered, but uh, it feels like the phrases are, are really going deep inside her brain, which which is a nice thing, I think. That's the best thing I could say about that, to be honest. That's very good, Neil. Um, on what with something else there about seasons, as you mentioned there earlier, Neil. Um, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, let me just take the other one away. Gevru kyoch arak ryoch saru grianwer is fower, is fower beewer. So a nice little shanakal that just sort of describes the seasons. So we've got gevru, winter, arach, spring, saru, summer, and fower, autumn. Gevru um, kyoch. So that's talking about the weather when we have kyo, when we have fog or mist. Arach roch, everybody knows about uhtoroche. So that's frosty weather in in frosty spring. Saru greenwer, sunny summer, of course. And then maybe the best one of all, four beer. A foodie autumn, uh, you know, an autumn that's bountiful with uh, the harvest and all of those wonderful foods. Um, so I like that. I like the rhymes and um, those associations before seasons. Gevru kyoch arach roch saru grimwer is for beer. Yeah, it's a wonderful one, and it and even how it's. Um, in many ways, of course, the green one and the, the B word, they're rhyming with sour and four, but also it splits, it's sort of split in two. You've got kyoch and roch, green one, B word. And when you think of a kyoch and roch, they're wintry, they're, they're negative in a sense, you know, frosty and foggy, but then sunny and plentiful with food. Um, mm, and they, it's they rhyme element. and they're also positive elements of the positive half. So I think that's that's very it's there's a lot of there's a few a few elements to this that um are quite nice uh, to notice. And got one uh, that's interesting cool. here, Huan. Um, just come in from the chat from Oliver. Um, so I think hmm. I can show it. He says, "Geodive, what's the exact difference between yar muir August Farriga?" These words, of course, are all, all you talk about the sea. Um, now, we've already mentioned Muir and Farage, so I suppose it's only fair that we deal with this one. Liar, you don't hear the word Liar so often, except in one particular phrase, Har Liar, meaning overseas. Um, I don't know. Huan, would you hear the word Liar in any other context? For me, it's just rarely, higher. and I think it's almost always yeah. in a phrase of some sort. Yeah. Um, so that's a bit. That's yeah, just that's used in one phrase. Maybe in the past it was used more frequently or in other senses, but we just use it in that one phrase, "harlyar," meaning um, overseas, abroad. And uh, Muir and Farragut we mentioned earlier, so we didn't really comment too much on the difference between them. Muir, of course is very similar to the Romance languages, like in, in French, it's la mer, isn't it? And I think in Italian, mm -hmm. mare, and so on. So uh, even in English, you've got maritime and marine and so on. But that, yeah. that muir is recognizable. And of course, as we know, if you want Connemara is a reference to Mara to the sea as well. Um, yeah. But mostly we use muir, mostly when I see it, I think it's in place names. So in the names of seas, for example, Anvanwir is the Mediterranean, because uh, it's in Medi, it's in the middle. So we use the Irish word man, Anvanwir. And there's, a, there's a other names of seas which use muir as well. Um, but we're, when we're generally talking about the sea, we just use the word farage. That's the most common word. 
um, I live by the sea. So when we're talking about the sea in general, Farga is the word. Muir often shows up in the place names to name a sea, and Yar just in that one phrase, Har Yar. Would you agree, Sean, or is there anything you would add to that? The only little thing to add is you often find Muir or Mara as the genitive form, isn't it? Uh, you often find that as well in more in in poetry or anything that's poetic, um, mm. especially uh, you did mention place names, but even let's say more recent place names, Ryoknamara, Sea View. Um, so that could be like the name of a street. Well. Yeah. yeah, and um, so Ryoknamara. The sound of the sea. That, that's it. That's it. Houses, names of houses and housing estates and streets and stuff. And also um er, er moir, um er moir on mm -hmm. the sea. There's little phrases as well. Yeah. The, and I think harmoir, I think they say as well. So there's a few there's a few phrases with moir in them. Um also Biamara, Marhampla, mm -hmm. seafood, Biamara. I I don't think I've ever seen Bia Farriga. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. So it is more of a. It's a bit, I suppose, similar to 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 a certain extent to how you have maritime and uh, and and all of that. So it's part of a phrase, mm -hmm. more specific phrase. Yeah. But the, Good question. But I agree. I agree. Yeah. Mm Farig -hmm. is more genital word. Good morning, Oliver. Um. Um, there's another interesting um, question there in the uh, comments, and it's from Mindy, and she asks, is there a word in Irish for the spirit of nature, like mother nature? Now, myself, personally, I'm not aware of it off the top of my head. Um, have you ever come across anything like that there, Neil? I'm not sure. Uh, it can be difficult to um uh, to find these very specific phrases because they're cultural as well as just linguistic you know mother nature i'm not sure in the past if people talked about mother nature as Gaelica. maybe they did um of course people had a lot of religious phrases a lot of very catholic or christian phrases and there are some references to other kind of spirits and things, of course, the supernatural. But Mother Nature, I'm not sure if I've ever heard anything like that. Have you? Not, not that I, not that I can think of. Like mm. um, as you were saying, it is very pr particular to a specific culture. Like you have Gaia mm. um, yeah. uh, from Greek mythology, and I can't think of anything like that. Oh, the closest thing I can think of, yeah, the closest thing I can think of is the fact that um, in the mythology, in the oldest, oldest stories, um, there were three goddesses who gave their name to Ireland. But um, so um, I think Eru was the oldest form, which became Era, of course, for the name of the country. And there was also was it Fola and Bamba as well. So. There were three goddesses, probably sister goddesses, and they all gave their name to Ireland. Um, but that was specific to the, you know, to the country rather than the spirit yeah. of nature, as Mindy's asking for. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, Mindy. I think it's just maybe we just didn't have it. Maybe maybe we should invent a new term if people are trying to use it. But it's a cultural thing rather than a linguistic problem, I think. And that's the thing in 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 Irish culture traditionally there were a lot of um, superstitions to this day even um, at, about around what is in English just called fairies but there's so many different terms in Irish for the different types of fairies and there's good ones uh, generally they're sort of not that good and you want to keep them away that's a lot of it um, but it's um, yeah, it's not Tinkerbell. You're right. You're right. It's a very different sense when people are talking about the traditional Irish fairy. Very different from from the common understanding. 
but they, they had a lot of control over so many things, especially over anything in nature. So mm. and you could use nature to protect against them. And that's where you where the concept of um, the may the may tree or the may bush would come in, for, for example. Um, and um, it's an, an interesting tradition that's still alive in some parts of Ireland today, where people would either have a hawthorn bush, um, skechgel, this is called in, in Irish, bright bush, um, this is just white to, uh, white flowers, but um, they'd either have one growing out the front or they'd get a branch of one and tie it out the front of their house and they'd tie colourful ribbons and rags and stuff like that to it um, the night before the 1st of May and they'd have it there in May and there's a few uses for it. Um, one of them simply seems to be just celebrating the coming of summer. So I guess you're mimicking the flowers that are that are blooming or going to soon bloom by tying on these ribbons and stuff. But also, um, it seems to traditionally have been used to keep away um, fairies and as they would be referred to, or like bad spirits. Mm, and um, to get oneself so that your summer is good and stuff like that so i was just thinking there of how that sort of ties in like using nature um sort of in this sense. this ties into a question we received mm. earlier doesn't it from maria um mm. some irish customs that incorporate nature so the maybush is one um of course Bialtana is one of the very 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 old festivals in ireland like um st bridget's day Lunasa at the start of August and Samhain and there were very very old customs lots of them and of course they all incorporated nature because we were living in nature in the old days but also other mm -hmm. time of year like um, midsummer so St John's Eve in June that's that's basically midsummer isn't it because it's around the 21st 20th yeah, of June so there'd be fires people always like fires and um uh there's so much bailages and shanachas so folklore and lore um that deals with this kind of stuff it's very interesting um but it's all i suppose people were trying to survive in a, in a hard world and maybe they didn't have the information to know how to deal with um you know like we have a lot of science these days um, so they had all of these beliefs to try and, and customs to try to um, deal with the, a very, very challenging world, I suppose. Um, another one I was thinking of from Maria's question, because um, she, she asked about uh, Irish customs that incorporate nature. I was thinking of one thing, which is not a custom, but it's, it's an interesting thing I've noticed in the language, and I'm sure other people have written about it too. Um, but if we look at a few words, they're very, very similar when we talk about um, your right hand, so, and, and lau yas. But that's very similar to talking about south, tam igdol o yas. And that sounds, so right and south, and that sounds like gujas for nice as well. And all of these words are very similar. And it could be jas or jesh in different forms. There's a bunch of words which can be jas or jesh. They're talking about something which is nice, which is correct. You know, to fix something, we say jeshi is the verb. We're making it right again. And something about the south being good and something about the right hand being good or the right hand side being good. So I guess the good side is the right or the south, that's as you're facing east, isn't it? The rising sun. All of the old, old, old monuments like Newgrange, for example, they face the rising sun, they face due east. So there's something about the right hand side, which is in the northern hemisphere, that's where the sun is going. That's that's clockwise as well, you know, that's the correct way somehow. And then if you go the opposite way and take two hope, that's the wrong way. That's anti-clockwise. Um, everything is upside down. So there's something 
weird or sinister about going to the left, going to the north on Turishkirt. So, um, yeah, I'm sure there must be some fantastic essays written about that. It's just some thoughts that occurred to me, but it's all about the path of the sun, uh, which goes to the south, from the east to the south, and behind us to the west. And um, like old, I think old churches too, but definitely pre-Christian sites, they're all facing east. So that was the assumption there. Yes. So yeah, if you notice it again, well. the right hand side, yeah, it's Christian as well as pre-Christian. You can notice that again, folks, when you see the word kajas for nice, um, or talking about the right hand side or the south, similar words. So, um, yeah, just something that was I've been musing on, I suppose, but very interesting anyway. So a lot of old customs and lore incorporate nature, of course. Um, so nice question, Grandma Hagat Maria. Interfad, interfad. Mushin, um, and will Ian Kishton at Ella and Shin? So let's see if, if anyone else has sent in. Uh, just some, had a really good tip um, from Language yeah. of Football, of course, who mm. has said if you want words to scale again regarding nature, look up articles, podcasts, and books by Manachan Magan. Yeah, of course, he's been. He's easy to find online. He's done so much, and he loves all of these interesting little words. So, you know, I must I must try to talk to him and see what he thinks about my theory about the right hand side. <laughs> I'm sure he knows all about it, but that's a good tip I, for anyone who's interested so. in nature. Mm -hmm. language of football. Agus vi kæste Daniel. Daniel had a question there. Vi en fisk by tides for en dag na guiha an usajer dem. Agus stor fokal kompas gharihe. An vil en dag til elle for en dag gå kort i oksiv de dolemori negelge. Mila mahag Daniel. So. Um, so Daniel there is asking um, if there are any other videos that we would recommend for learners that are similar that uh, that are similar to a video we did I think some years ago now called Naguiha, uh, which is uh, was based on the same poem by the poem by on a poem by the same name, and it does it does bring up the whole thing about um, north, south, east, and west, and in Irish as well there is that thing about like Jishka South, and yes, from the South, a Dolo, yes, going South. So there are very different forms, and that's a whole other kettle of fish. But that uh, that little poem actually helps. Uh, so if you um, if you look that up, you'll find that on our uh, channel. And um, I'm just thinking, is there are there any other little poems that poems are nature oriented? Off the top of my head, I'm sure Marcino Giran has something. Um, he wrote about life so. in Connemara uh, 100 years ago. So there's definitely stuff. The one that I always think of is Fuishu Yodse. So he talks about the community and island life and so on. But there's definitely references to nature in there. Kahalo Sharki from Donegal as well. Um, I think poets love to talk about nature, actually. and. Like I said, in the old Irish poetry that I did at university, there was a lot of nature poetry. Um, but that is different Irish. It's not so easy to read. Um, that's a good one. No, I don't have um, any. Do you have any other ideas at the top of your head? I'm trying to think now. There is so much nature incorporated into into Irish literature, poetry, yeah. both poetry and food, prose. Yeah. A prose, as you, were, as you mentioned there, it was such a big part of life for anyone living rurally, it's going to be. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure. Um, if anything comes, but I would definitely say to have a good look around, even the major ports, any major, nothing's coming to mind at this moment. But um, just um, a look through common Irish poetry, common Irish po poems, 
I'm sure there's going to be a few there because um, yeah, the, it's the, the, there's a um, there's a it is a definitely a strong theme in in Irish literature. Marcin, um, so I think that might be all our questions for um, tonight. Oh, um, language of football there uh, suggested Kilegon by Raftery um, and and Phila and. I'm just trying to think. I am familiar with that poem, um, but not familiar enough to remember it word for word. Um, but um, it's definitely a poem worth looking up, and it's also a song, Kilagon. Um, and uh, Mindy there recommends Newlyn Egon. Newlyn Egon is a famous Irish um, poet, so yeah. definitely worth. Yeah. Martin Absolutely. Erin yeah, Lee Greta from a different generation. She's a younger poet. So, you know, poets love nature and, it's, you know, it's a big part of Irish history. Didn't we talk about the, the blackbird over Belfast Loch in that ninth century yeah. poem? You know, so um, there's a lot of it out there, really. It's hard to narrow down, to be honest. But there's a few people. Marci na gira, nula ni ghonal, darin ni grife. Thanks for the suggestions, folks. Marcin, um Shine, Shin Geralist and the the law and yo. So that's um that's the end of it for today, I'm afraid. Um Gormila Mahagatanil um uh as as the Swin Chir Fad and Khur Fad. So thank you so much, Neil, for all of your ideas and your your um input. Um as the blame I have le the bite size of an upper of father in it too. Uh, thank you so much for everything you've done in bite size. We know the community is going to miss you so much. We've had lots of comments there tonight about we're going to miss you and miss your videos. They've been of help to people over the years, I think. That's pretty clear. And uh, we're going to miss you so much uh, in bite size too. So we'll leave you the last word. I guess good to meet you, Mahagi. Your father, as the as the trachtish, and thanks for the comments, and uh, and and thank you, Neil, as well. Good to meet you, Mahagi. Good to meet you, Mahagi. Your father, Marcin. Um, slang of Pauline. I guess um by 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 Q and A, Ella on Galuarish. So bye for now, and the next month there'll be another Q and A. So keep tuned for that. Slang live. Slant out.